How y'all doing, good people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers. So please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. Also on Instagram, if you wanna follow me there, hey, come on over. My Instagram handle is Richard Fain, Millionaire Mentor. But just be careful, guys. A lot of scammers on Instagram as well. Just understand, I will never ask you to send me money to invest for you. So as long as you understand that, follow me on Instagram. I, I, hey, I post reels on Instagram every other day, motivational stuff, giving you quick nuggets, 60 seconds, through my reels on Instagram. So if you want to follow me over there, like I said, my Instagram name is Richard Fain Millionaire Mentor. Just be careful of scammers on Instagram. If they try to slide in your DMs asking you for money, it ain't me. I don't do that. So please just be careful on that front. If you want up to 15 free Stocks. Moomoo Moo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks when you open a new Moomoo Moo brokerage account. They're going to give you up to 15 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. When you put $100 in your Moomoo Moo account, they're going to give you five free stocks. When you put $1,000 in your Moomoo Moo account, they're going to give you 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo Moo link. Open up your new Moomoo Moo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. I also put together a Moomoo Moo tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Moomoo Moo app to make your first trade. So if you want that video that I did, that tutorial video, then go down to the description box. You'll see my email address there. Send me an email and say, hey, Richard, I've opened my Moomoo account. I put money in my Moomoo account. Send me that Moomoo tutorial video where you show me how to, you know, to use the Moomoo account to make my first trade so that I can start building wealth. And I'll send you that video. Also, if you want my wealth transfer blueprint, where I have three big boy blue chip paper assets that I'm gonna be buying over the next 10 years to double my net worth, I can send you that video as well. So just go down to the description box, you'll see my email address, and just let me know you want those two videos, the tutorial video and the wealth transfer blueprint video. I'll send both of them to you, of course at no cost, and you will be able to start building wealth to get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Because here's the situation, guys. The activities we did in 2023, if we didn't get the results we were looking for, then in 2024, you got to do different activities in order to get different results. That's the, the, the clear definition of insanity is we keep doing the same activities over and over but we expect different results. The only way you get different results is you have to do different activities, guys. So if you want to build wealth and you're not happy with your progress, guess what? Don't do the stuff you did in 2023 if it didn't give you the results you're looking for. I'm telling you right now, if you want different results, do different activities. Right. So get down to that description box. Click on that Moomoo link. Open it up. Put you some money in the account. 
send me an email. I'm going to send you those two videos. So there ain't no reason why you can't start building wealth ASAP. With those two videos I'm going to send you, it'll tell you everything you need to know. You can copy my plan, plus I'm giving you a tutorial video that walks you through how to use the Moomoo Moo app to make your basic trades. That, that's all I can do, guys. I can, just, I can just teach you how to fish. I can't give you a fish. See, if I give you a fish, I'm feeding you for one day. But if I teach you how to fish, you can feed yourself for a lifetime. I'm trying to teach you how to fish on this YouTube channel. And if you're rocking with that, lock it in with a thumbs up. Lock it in with a thumbs up if you're rocking with that methodology of helping you get to your financial freedom. Well, guys, we got a lot to cover today, a whole bunch to cover. Um, we got a couple of too big to fail banks, right? Tier one banks. I'm talking about trillion and trillions of dollars in assets, in, in deposits, one of, the, one of the four horsemen, that's what I call them, you know, the four horsemen. These are two of the four horsemen when it comes to the, the, the biggest banks in America are, are, are saying things about the U.S. dollar and, and our national debt that you need to hear. You need to hear this information and we're going to unpack it in today's video. Now, one thing I want to clear up before I dive into this information I've gotten a couple of comments in, in my most recent live streams where people are complaining about gloom and doom. Oh, you got too much gloom and doom. Why everything got to be negative? It's just, it. listen guys, I've already told y'all and I'm going to tell you again, this is not an entertainment channel. This is not a feel good and make you feel good and fuzzy channel. Oh, everything is going to be okay. Just believe in yourself. You ain't got to do anything else. Don't, don't take action. Uh, don't understand what's going on in, in this real financial world we live in. Let's just be in a make-believe world over here in the matrix. We don't want to hear no bad news. All I want to do is I want you to just give us good news and, and encourage us and just tell us it's going to be okay. Uh, you don't really have to do anything. Just keep doing all the wrong activities. You'll somehow get the right results. No. That's not what this channel is about. And it's not about gloom and doom either. What it really is about is telling you what's really happening in this financial world we live in to give you tools, to give you financial tools in order to get you to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's what the channel is about. That's what I try to do every day. I'm not going to get on here and tell you everything is a bed of roses when it's not. There's a reason why 100 million people in this country don't have any retirement savings, guys. There's a reason for it. It's a reason for it. It's a reason 62% of people live paycheck to paycheck. I'm here to try to give you information that you can use to your advantage to build wealth. So, yeah, I'm going to tell you things just like today. Some people might say this information I'm getting ready to share with you is gloom and doom. I don't believe that. I believe it's the real world we live in. And I believe if you don't take control of your own financial destiny, you're going to get ran over. You're going to get ran over in this real world if you don't take control of your own financial destiny. And I'm trying to give you information that can help you do that. Now, if you look at it as gloom and doom, you miss the point. I mean, do you think we live in a, 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 a world that's all sunshine and, and perfect weather? Is that the world you think we live in? No. We live in a real world where there's good and evil. Yes, that's the world we live in. There's good and there's evil. There is no good without evil. There is no evil without good. It's no different in our financial system, guys. In our financial system, it's good and evil. Now, you can sit over here and think it's all good and everything's perfect and someone's going to come to your rescue. Go right ahead. You can stay in the matrix if you want to. But in this real world over here, in this real financial world, there's good and evil. Right. So having said that, let's dive into this 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 conversation about the U.S. dollar and our, our, our national debt. So you got two big boy banks, Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase have come on record and, and gave their opinion about 
the state of the U.S. dollar, the state of basically the United States debt, the national debt. And we're going to also talk about a competitor to the U.S. dollar, which is BRICS Nation. We're going to talk about them, too, because it's extremely important, guys. You understand what's happening in the world and the attack that's getting ready to unfold on the dollar. Why is the dollar so important? Why? Because of my assets, because of your assets. Most of our assets are in U.S. dollars. Right? What do you think these companies that we invest our money in, in the United States, what do they use for a currency? U.S. dollar. What does the world use right now as its reserve currency? The U.S. dollar. So this information is important as you attempt to buy assets and build your wealth, guys. You got to know the information that's out there. You can't be hidden somewhere in some cocoon thinking it's no, no evil out here. It's all good. No, it's good and evil in this world. You need to know the evil just like you need to know the good. We need to have a balance. But I don't need to be in some make-believe world over here thinking it's all peaches and cream, all a bed of roses. It's not. There are, there are countries out here, I'm talking about big boy countries, trying to take down the U.S. dollar. Do you know what that means for the United States? We cease to exist. So all this boo. Oh, BRICS, listen, these nations are not trying to do us a favor, guys, led by Russia. And again, I'm not trying to get into no political nothing. I'm not trying to talk about somebody's country. I'm just telling you, I'm a, I'm a, I live in the United States. I'm a, I'm a United States citizen. All of my wealth is in the United States. So you're dang on right. I'm going to take offense if someone trying to take us down. Yes, I am from a financial standpoint, and I'm going to let everybody know who wants to know who will listen to me on this channel. What the heck is going on? So let's dive into this thing. The first article we're going to look at talks about the U.S. national debt. Listen to this. The U.S. national debt is rising by one trillion dollars every 100 days. That's crazy, guys. I mean, it's, 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 it's going up by $1 trillion every 100 days. Listen to this. The debt load of the United States is growing at a quicker clip in recent months, increasing by $1 trillion nearly every 100 days. The nation's debt permanently crossed over to 34 trillion on January 4th. After briefly crossing the mark on December 29th, according to data from the US Department of Treasury. So here it is, guys. This ain't some rogue uh, online presence saying that our, 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 our national debt is, 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 is going over 1 trillion every single 100 days. This is the US Treasury telling you this. It's reached 33 trillion on September 15, 2023 and 32 trillion on January 15, 2023, hitting this accelerated pace. Before that, the 1 trillion move higher from 31 trillion took about 8 months. So basically what they're telling you is the debt is increasing faster. Faster. I told you guys yesterday, by 2034, they predict our national debt to be $45 trillion. Based on this pace right here, it may come sooner, guys. It may come sooner. It may come sooner. That is a problem, right? That is a problem. Now, let's take a look at, let's take a look at what Bank of America is saying. Here's what Bank of America is saying. <clears throat> U.S. dollar death spiral. Crisis fears grow after Bank of America issues shocking one trillion every hundred days. Warning 
amid huge Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and crypto price boom. So Bank of America is one of the big boy banks, one of the four horsemen, one of the two big to fail banks is saying warning. They're issuing a warning sign. Let's read on. Let's see exactly what they're talking about here. And let's dive into this thing. So it says, Bitcoin alongside the wider Ethereum X. RP and crypto market has rocketed higher over the last year. Bitcoin price has topped 60. Now this article is a few days old, so it's 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 top 70. It's top $70,000 a coin, guys, making it a 1 trillion asset again. While the combined Ethereum, XRP and crypto market is well over 2 trillion dollar asset now hear me out here this is what i'm trying to understand here our national debt is is going through the roof but yet and still we got cryptocurrency aka bitcoin going through the roof as well how do those two match up how do those two match up well, I'll tell you how they match up. Both of them are out of control. Both of them are out of control. Our U.S. debt is out of control. Bitcoin, a.k.a. crypto, is out of control as well. Now, as new emails reveal, staggering clues to true identity of the mystery of the Bitcoin creator, Shitoshi Nakamoto. Bank of America analysts have warned the U.S. debt load is about to ramp up to $1 trillion every Hundred days fueling a Bitcoin price surges. Now, why they throw in the name of this guy who supposedly started Bitcoin? I have no idea. I have no idea. Maybe because of the unknown nature of this individual who who, who has created a two trillion dollar asset. Two trillion dollars, guys. Two trillion dollars. And it's all phony baloney, in my opinion. But, but I digress. Let's, let's keep moving here. Bank of America analysts have warned the U.S. debt load is about to ramp up to $1 trillion every 100 days, fueling a Bitcoin price surge. See how they're tying the two together now? See, this is what Bank of America is saying. Historically, this is Bitcoin, historically having... They're getting ready to make more of it. That's what that having means. It means they're making more of it. That's expected to cause crypto price chaos is just around the corner. And that's coming, guys. I think that's coming in, I want to say April. They're going to have it in April and create more. Now, a lot of people are going to say, no, they're not creating more. That's just 21 million and it'll never be more than 21 million. They're creating more, guys. They're creating more. Why? Because it's 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 phony baloney. It's it, it, it's a Ponzi scheme. And a lot of people say our national debt is a Ponzi scheme. Why? See, it's a Ponzi scheme because you can never repay it. You can never repay it. The, the, the national debt, guys, will never repay this. We'll always kick it, kick the can down the road. Always kick the can down the road. So let's keep moving on. The true crypto... This is according to Elon Musk, surprisingly side with Bitcoin critic Warren Buffett amid crypto price swings. So Warren Buffett and Elon Musk, according to this article, agree. They're critics. They are critics of Bitcoin. They are critics. Why? Don't make any sense with the price swings. Y'all know how Warren Buffett feels about crypto, right? And Elon Musk, I, I, I will say I was surprised about his criticism of, of the price jump in crypto, but I'm not. I'm not surprised by it because it's a, it's a pump and dump. It's a Ponzi scheme. You know, it's a Ponzi scheme. That's my opinion, guys. You don't have to agree with that. But my opinion is it's a Ponzi scheme. The true currency, Elon Musk surprisingly sides with Bitcoin critic Warren Buffett amid crypto price swings. One of the richest, two of the richest men in America, matter of fact, two of the richest men in the world, 
are critics. They're, 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 they're questioning this crypto price swing. Just telling you. Now, let's get back to the U.S. national debt. Is Okay, we know it's rising by one trillion every hundred days. But here's what the chief strategist of Bank of America wrote in a note to his clients. This is what this is what one of your chief strategists at Bank of America at Bank of America wrote to his clients. Here it is. Little wonder debt disbasement trades closing in on all time highs, i.e. gold and Bitcoin. He predicted the newly created spot Bitcoin ex exchange traded funds, those ETFs by Grayscale, uh, BlackRock, ARK. So this is what he says. Harnett predicted the newly created spot Bitcoin ETFs that have taken Wall Street by storm over the last month are on a course for blowout year in part because of the collapse of the U.S. dollar. So what he's basically saying here, Bitcoin is rising because the U.S. dollar is collapsing. Who's behind that, guys? Who's behind that? See, basically what they're saying is the rise of Bitcoin devalues what? The U.S. dollar. So we got a Ponzi scheme over here. A Ponzi scheme. Who's behind this Ponzi scheme? I don't know. Ain't there some countries out there called the BRICS nation? I don't know. Don't they have a vested interest in the U.S. dollar collapsing? I don't know. But a bunch of y'all in the chat here that live in the United States and trade business in the U.S. dollar and have your assets in the U.S. dollar. Why in the world would you be in a country that you want their currency to fail? Somebody help me out with that. I mean, who lives here in the United States but want the dollar to fail? That, that, to me, guys, that's just absolutely bananas. You live in the United States, but yet and still, you are a proponent of the U.S. dollar collapsing and you live in a country that is built on the U.S. dollar. <laughs> Boy, we got some crazy people in this world. I'm telling you, man. Y'all better know who y'all hanging around out there, guys. You better know who you hanging around, boy. You better know what they got in their closets. You got a lot of closet people in this, in this country. They closet. They, do, they are not for the United States. They, they, they are basically double agents, if you ask me. That's my opinion. Because how in the world you get the crypto to go on this run again, yet and still, what's happening to the U.S. dollar? What's happening to the U.S. dollar as crypto goes on this run? It's weakening. I'm just telling you right here what it just said. Hey, he, right here. Harnett predicted the newly created spot Bitcoin ETFs that have taken Wall Street by storm over the last month are on course for a blowout year. In part because of the collapse of the U.S. dollar. I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all better figure out what's going on. You better figure out what I'm just trying to give you information. You you decide whatever you want to decide. I, I'm giving information. That's all I'm giving. All these articles that I'm reading, guys, go out there and read them for yourself. I'm just giving you information. I, I, I'm telling you, it is wild. If you think about Bitcoin and you think about the dollar, Bitcoin and the dollar. So Bitcoin goes up. The dollar starts to do what? Devalue. The higher Bitcoin goes the lower the dollar goes. I live in the United States. My country created the dollar. My country has the world's, is the world's currency. Our dollar is the world's currency. I'm just telling you. Let's read on. BlackRock, the largest new spot Bitcoin ETF, has this week eclipsed 10 billion in assets under management while Fidelity has ranked in 6 billion. While Fidelity has raked in 6 billion since their early January debut. 
pushing the Bitcoin price higher is what's been called Bitcoin's IPO moment. Initial public offering. Now the whole hype is push it high as you can push it, devalue the dollar as much as you can devalue it. And at the end of the day, if you live in America, you can't be happy with that because we go where the dollar goes here in America. First thing they take our dollar, then what you think is going to be next, the whole country. So take what you want to think. It's your life. You do whatever you want to do. You want to go out and support Bitcoin and you want to go out and support BRICS uh, nation. You want to devalue the U.S. dollar and all that crazy stuff. Go right ahead, guys. Go right ahead. It's not going to stop with the U.S. dollar. The next thing they're going to come is want to put a put a boot on your neck right here in the United States. They're going to want to take the whole country. It starts with the dollar. See, see what you got to understand. You got to go look at history, guys. You know, you got to look at history. If they can if they can if they can devalue our dollar and crush our dollar, they crush us. Because that's where our power is. See, our power is in the U.S. dollar. It's being the world's reserve currency. It's having the respect financially of the globe. They don't want that. They can take that from us. This BRICS nations and all the rest of these little characters out there. And I'll get to them in a second. It ain't just the BRICS. It ain't just, it ain't just uh, Brazil, Russia, uh, India. China and South Africa, they got another 159 countries. They're pitching their, their, their currency, their new currency, their new payment system. I'm just telling you guys, what's going on is serious stuff, especially for us who are trying to build wealth. Our wealth is predicated on the strength of the U.S. dollar. My wealth is nothing if the U.S. dollar is nothing. Your wealth is nothing unless the U.S. dollar is something. You get where I'm going with that? Let's move on. Keep moving on through this. The U.S. national debt has skyrocketed in recent years, crossing the 34 trillion mark at the beginning of 2024 as the pandemic, lockdown, stimulus measures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that one. That's that one right there, guys. So we know, I just wanted to tie in Bitcoin with the U.S. dollar, right? And, and, and give you guys some sense of idea of what's going on with our national debt. Now, who holds like $7.5 trillion of that national debt is being held by different countries, led by Japan. Japan holds about $1.1 trillion. Come back to that is also who? China. China is, is, is right below uh, Japan. And then, of course, we got the UK or England or Britain or whatever you want to call them over there in, in, in the UK. They own there, too. Right. So 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 we got matter of fact, let me let me just let me just give you exactly who these countries are and, and how much of our debt do they hold. Let me give that to you. So right here it says China, and I'm, I'm, Japan, 1.1 trillion. China, 782 billion. The UK, 716 billion. And then you got, who else you got here? Luxembourg, 371 billion. And then Canada, 321 billion. The, and that's an estimated 7.6 trillion chunk of our debt, these people are holding. They're holding it right now, these countries. I don't believe we ever pay that debt down. I think we can continue to kick it down the road. I don't think we pay it down. That's my opinion on that, guys. You may differ in your opinion. I don't think we pay it down. But let's move on. Let's move on to JP Morgan Chase and their CEO, Jamie Dimon. Again, guys, two big to fail banks, tier one big boy banks. Got some, you know, not so nice things to say. Here, 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 here's the headline. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon warns U.S. driving toward a cliff as debt snowballs. That's how that, that's that's the title of the of the article, guys. 
J.P. Morgan Chase Chairman, CEO Jamie Dimon says the U.S. is speeding towards a cliff as the nation's runaway debt continues to mount, sounding the alarm that the situation needs to be tackled before it results in a crisis. This is Jamie Dimon, CEO of the largest bank in America, J.P. Morgan Chase. This is what he's saying. The chief executive of the nation's largest bank issued the warning during a panel discussion at a bipartisan policy center on Friday when he was asked for his take on what it means for the economy if the federal government fails to address the issue. And this is what he said. Diamond began his response by recalling how the economy looked back in 1982 with inflation around 12%. So we think inflation was, is bad now, back in the 80s, man. Inflation was 12%, guys. Can you imagine that? That was higher than our high water mark in June of 2022, which was 9%. The prime rate around 21.5%, guys. That was the prime rate. Right now, the prime rate, somebody in the chat helped me out. I think it's around 8.5%, the prime rate. But I'm sure somebody in the chat will let me know. But back then, in 1982, guys, the prime rate was 21.5%. Can you imagine that today? Can you imagine what pain we would be in right now if our prime rate was 21.5%? Could you imagine? And unemployment was somewhere around 10%. Somewhere around 10%. Yep, somebody just told me prime rate today is 8.5%. Can you imagine 21.5%? Could you imagine the pain we would be in financially right now? A lot of us. Can you imagine if unemployment was somewhere around 10%? Where is unemployment today? 3.9%. See, this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. We, we, we think we have it bad. Uh-uh. Go back to 1982. They had it bad. But guess what? Our country still persevered. We still made it through. That's what I want you guys to hang your hat on. Our country still persevered and made it through. Let's keep, let's keep moving here. And the debt was around 35% of the gross domestic product or GDP. He noted that today, the debt to GDP ratio is around 100% and said it is projected to reach 130% of GDP by 2035. So this guy is painting a really, 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 really bad picture. Now, this guy is the, the CEO of the number one, the largest bank in the United States. This is the CEO. And this is the picture he's painting. Let's keep moving. Let's keep seeing what he got to say. He said the U.S. has not reached the hockey stick surge yet. Basically saying we ain't even got to the worst part yet. He said we ain't even gotten to the worst part yet. That's what the hockey, whatever that, whatever little terminology you use, but that's the way I interpret it, right? But when it starts, markets around the world, by the way, because foreigners own seven trillion of US debt. Remember, I just gave y'all that information one minute ago. Remember, I just told you we had 7.6 trillion of our U.S. national debt being held by other countries. That's what Jamie Dimon is talking about when he says the 7 trillion. See, we got 7 something, 7 and some change trillion held by countries that um, we'll see. We'll see if they're our friend or not. We'll see. But we owe them over 7 trillion. There will be a rebellion. Now, listen to this now. Again, guys, this guy is the CEO of the largest bank in the United States. This is what he's saying. There will be a rebellion. And that is the worst possible way to do it. <laughs> it is a cliff. We see the cliff, Diamond said. It's about 10 years out. We're going 60 miles an hour toward it. 
Diamond went on to agree with fellow panel member, former House Speaker Paul Ryan, who called the snowballing debt the most predictable crisis we've ever had. The outlook for the national debt level is bleak, with economists increasingly sounding the alarm over the torrid pace of spending by Congress and the White House. See, now here's the deal, guys. A lot of people want to blame it on one party or the other. A lot of y'all on here going to say it's, it's the Democrats. A lot of y'all on here going to say it's the Republican. But the last time I checked, Congress is made up of two parts. The House of Representatives and the Senate. And guess what? Both of those have Democrats and Republicans on it. So guess what? This ain't a Democrat thing. This ain't a Republican thing. This is an American thing. We cause this. All of us. Don't be trying to, oh, it's Joe Biden. Oh, it's that guy. Oh, it, no, it's us. See, that's the problem with us. We want to always put the blame on the other, other side. No, put the blame on the American. We caused it. We elected these people. You and I put these people in office. And guess what? They're responsible along with us because we are a country of spenders, not savers. We caused this $34 trillion in debt. We caused it. There was no one person. There was no one party. No, the Americans caused it. We caused it. Again, we are a nation of spenders. Our whole economy depends on us spending money on crap we don't need. Our whole economy is, is predicated on that. So if you want to point a finger at somebody, go get in the mirror and point it at yourself because you contributed to it. I contribute to it. We all contribute to this 34 trillion. Even though we like to point the finger at somebody else. Oh, no, I don't have anything to do with that. That's over there. That's the Republicans. That's the Democrats. No, that's Americans, period. And until Americans decide we want to do something about it, it's going to continue to escalate. Just telling you, just telling you. Let's keep moving. The latest findings from the Congressional Budget Office indicate that the national debt will be nearly double in size over the next three decades. Double in size, guys, over the next three decades. You do know what that means, right? We go from 34 trillion to 70 trillion in the next 30 years. I've already told you they're predicting by 2034 will be 45 trillion. The Congressional Budget Office is saying in three decades, 30 years, we'll double this thing. We'll be 70 trillion. Again, guys, who's responsible for reducing that? All of us as Americans. Not one party, all of us as Americans. We elect these people you put in Congress. We elect this person you put in the White House seat. We elect them. We're part of that process. If you don't like what the budget is, I must say the deficit is, if you don't like the national debt, elect somebody different who will change it. Elect somebody different, guys. Stop pointing the finger at each other and, 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 and elect people that will change it. There we go again. Here we go in the chat. Oh, it's Democrats. Oh, it's Republicans. No, it's not. It's Americans. We're all Americans here. This $34 trillion in, in national debt belongs to all of us. All of us. Look at your credit card debt right now in America. $1.3, $1.4 trillion. Who that belong to? I guess that belonged to the Republicans and the Democrats too. No, that belong to you. That $1.3, $1.4. How about student loan debt? $1.6 trillion? Who that belong to? Republicans and Democrats too? Who that debt belong to? You. Uh, what about... Uh, Automobile loan debt. Who that belong to? That's about two trillion. Who does that belong to? I guess that belonged to the Republicans and the Democrats too. Now, see, that's the problem with us. We don't want to take no responsibility for, for crap we created. We we rather put it on somebody else. Like who, whoever y'all put in that seat at the White House going, uh, that one person is gonna, ah, it's gonna be the second coming or something. Come on, guys. Come on. The candidate you go, you, you, you already got in there. What he done done? The, the guy who finna go up against him was in there already. He, he came back the second time and lost. And now y'all trying to put him back in there again. I mean, come on. 
What is this? Let's go find somebody else. Different. We keep, what did I say at the beginning of this thing? What's the definition of insanity? You keep on doing the same old thing over and over, but you expect different results each time. If we keep electing the same old guys, <laughs> but we expect different results. So, okay, let's say the Republicans win and their candidate. Y'all put y'all's candidate in. What are you going to do different than he didn't do the last time? We still got, we still got, we still had 20 some trillion dollars in debt. I, I, I don't think the last time he got in there, he wiped the debt clean. Did he? No. Okay. When, when, when the Democrats guy got in there four years ago, did he wipe the debt clean? No. So these two guys, angle, either one of them y'all put in there, they not going to solve this problem. They didn't solve it when they were in there the first time. What make y'all think they're going to solve it the second time around? They're not. Neither one of them solved our national debt problem. Neither one of them. Matter of fact, it continued to grow under their watch. <laughs> this is the thing I don't understand about us. We're arguing about these two guys who've already had their opportunities. They failed, both of them, in my opinion. We still got $34 trillion in debt. But we, but, 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 but we cannot wait to get to the polls in November to put one of them back in there again thinking we're going to get something different. No, you're going to get the same thing you got from 2016 to 2020, and then you're going to get the same thing you got from 2020 to 2024. You're going to get the same treatment. Those same two guys, back to back, you elect one of them again, they're going to give you the same thing they gave you the first time, which is basically nothing. We still got $34 trillion in debt. That's my opinion. I digress. Let's keep moving. What else we got here? So it says, the latest... Findings from the Congressional Budget Office indicate that the national debt will double in size over the next three decades. By the end of 2022, the national debt grew about 97% of gross domestic product. Under current law, that figure is expected to skyrocket to 181% at the end of 2053. A debt burden that will far exceed any previous level. Who gonna fix that? Who gonna fix that, guys? Somebody help me out. Who gonna fix that problem? Which one of these people we put, we trying to put in the White House gonna fix that problem? I say neither, because they've already been there before. They've already had their shot, and, and neither one of them did it. I say we find somebody new to put in there, completely new, and try them. I, the definition of insanity is, is doing the same old activities and expecting different results. They've already did their activities and we already know what their results are. Why would we think if they get a second shot at it, their activities will be different and it will create a different result? I don't think so. I think we need to think about something else. L let's move on to the last thing we're going to cover before we get out of here. And that's going to be uh, BRICS Nation. And this has to do with the dollar, guys. This has to do with, in my opinion, our assets. I think it has to do with our assets 100% because our assets, at least my assets, are, are, are tied to the dollar. I don't know about your assets. But see, my assets ain't going to be worth nothing under these guys' payment system. This BRICS Nation, folks, my assets ain't going to be worth nothing. Yours ain't going to be worth nothing either. So believe whatever you want. To. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to have mine in Bitcoin. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I'm going to have mine in gold. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have mine in gold. Well, then you're going to have to move countries. You're going to go find another country to live in. I mean, for me as an American, I, I, I'm not going to support something that's going to devalue the dollar. That's why I don't buy crypto. That's why I don't buy Bitcoin. I'm not going to buy anything that's going to devalue the dollar. And, and, and in my opinion, that's what Bitcoin is doing. Guys, if Bitcoin goes to $1,000 a coin, that's just devaluing the dollar, man. I'm telling you. In my opinion, guys, I'm not, this is not a convince you channel. I'm just giving you my opinion. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Create your own channel and, 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 and you, can, you can give your opinion. My opinion is the higher crypto goes, the, the more the dollar becomes devalued. The more your assets 
your real assets, your real estate, your paper assets in our great stock market, your business, the three big boy asset classes that many, many Americans have used to build wealth, the more crypto goes up in value, the more those three assets get devalued. Why? Because those three assets are tied to the U.S. dollar. Just telling me. That's my opinion. You think what you want to think. So all y'all out there supporting Bitcoin and, and, and all this other crap, go ahead, man. The value in the dollar. If you don't like it, get out of my chat. That's all I can tell you. That's a perfect way to solve that problem. If you don't like what I'm saying, get out of the chat. <laughs> Bounce. Hasta luego. <laughs> get out of the chat. If you don't like it, get out of the chat. This is, my, this is my channel. I can give my opinion. Last time I checked in this great country that I live in, I have a, I have a right to, to, to voice my opinion. And that's all it is. In this great country I live in, I have a right to voice my opinion. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not calling nobody out of their name. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm giving my opinion. And if you don't like it, Bounce. You ain't got to be in the chat. So bounce if you don't like it. Bounce. Russia reveals work on blockchain payment system for BRICS nations. The powerful global South Block has been pursuing ways to de-dollarize trade and circumvent Washington's policy of economic warfare. Okay, see, y'all thought I was lying earlier. I told y'all what these people trying to do. Y'all thought I was lying. If you live in the United States and you have assets that are tied to the dollar, how in the world can you support this? I don't know. I don't know. That's just a question, guys. That's just a question. Let's read on. And again, I ain't got nothing to get in any of the countries that are in BRICS. I got no problem with any of those countries. I'm sure they're good, good people in those countries I have nothing against nobody. I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm reading an article and then giving you my opinion. I'm reacting to an article. I got nothing against any country in this world. I'm an American though. So my allegiance, number one, is to America. Because that's where I live. That's where I was given the opportunity to be whatever I wanted to be. Nobody stopped me. Nobody said, Richard, no, you can't be that in this country. I believe it's still the greatest country in the world. And I'm a proud American. I don't care what nobody else say. If you ain't a proud one, that's your business. But I'm a proud American. Even with his checkered past and all those things that have happened to my ancestors, I'm still a proud American. And I still believe it's the greatest country in the world. And anything out there that's going to try to devalue the dollar is taking food out of my mouth and taking food from my children's mouth. I, I, I can't support it, but let's keep moving. Russian presidential aid revealed on March 5th that the BRICS bloc of emerging economies is considering developing an independent payment system based on digital currencies and blockchain to reduce reliance on Western financial systems. AKA, we want to destroy the dollar. Why? Because if we know we destroy the dollar, we destroy America, period. So y'all can think what y'all want to think, guys. I told y'all in this world, there is good and there is evil. And I'm not saying any of these countries are evil. I'm just telling you it's good and evil. It's win or lose. That's how this world works. Oh, no, it, everybody can win. No, that's not how it works, girls. Uh, uh, boys and girls, go look at your history. Go look at your history of this world. Please go look at the history of this world since it's been in existence. Go look at it. There's always a winner and there's always a loser. And right now, America is winning. And you got to believe a lot of these countries don't like that. They don't like that we're winning. They want to win. I mean, what country is going to want to sit second seat to the United States for 100 years? Nobody will. No country wants to do that. I, can't, I guarantee you, especially not none of these guys in, in this brick block. None of them do. We are the 900-pound gorilla on top of the hill. And everybody's going to come after us. 
Why? Because we're winning. We're on top. That's the way this world works. It's always somebody ready to knock you off the top. And the way they're going about it is through economics. Because they know if they can devalue the dollar and dethrone the dollar as the world's reserve currency, they win. That's how you cripple a great nation. You take away its currency. That's how you chip away at them. Right? That's the new warfare is the economy. Right? That's why you see this rise in Bitcoin. I guarantee you, you got foreign influence boosting this thing. Because the further Bitcoin goes up, guess what? The dollar goes down. And I live in a country where the dollar is extremely important to me because my assets are tied to the dollar. My way of living is tied to the dollar. My way of financial survival is tied to the dollar. I'm not going to support anything that devalues the dollar. I'm just not. I don't care what you do. I'm telling you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to support anything that devalues the dollar. Let's move on. We believe that creating an independent BRICS payment system is an important goal for the future. Whose future? Whose future are they talking about? Can't be my future. I live in the United States. My assets are tied to the dollar. So I don't know whose who's future. Maybe talking about the world's future. But it can't be talking about my future. So who, who, whose future is he talking about? which would be based on state-of-the-art tools such as digital technologies and blockchain. There's that word again, blockchain. Y'all know how I feel about that word blockchain. Here we go again. Here we go. The main thing is to make sure it is convenient for governments, common people, and businesses, as well as cost-effective and free of politics. Now, come on now. <laughs> Do you really believe that sentence? Free of politics. This whole thing is political. This whole thing is political. Free of politics. This whole thing that they're doing is political. But on a global scale. It's political on a global scale. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. The main thing is to make it convenient for governments, common people and businesses, as well as cost effective and free of politics. The Kremlin official added work will continue to develop the contingent reserve arrangement, primarily regarding the use of currencies in other than the U.S. dollar. Details of the system, such as whether BRICS will develop its own blockchain or use an existing platform, were not disclosed. A coalition initially made up of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa at the start of the year, BRICS expanded for the first time since 2010 to include Egypt, Iran, Ethiopia, and the UAE. So they're expanding this BRICS block or the BRICS nation, whatever you want to call it. Basically, more countries are starting to sign on. So more countries are saying, yes, we would benefit from a new payment system that does not include the U.S. dollar being the world's reserve currency. So there you go. There you go. So that, that's kind of what's happening. Saudi Arabia and Argentina were also invited to join the bloc last year. However, as of February, Saudi officials said that the kingdom was still considering the invitation, while the far-right government in Buenos Aires officially declined as newly elected president, whatever his name is, seeks to deepen ties with the U.S. See, the U.S. still a 900-pound gorilla, man. A lot of these countries still know. See, this is an interesting thing. If you look at some of these countries and some of their most powerful people and some of their, you know, the people that have wealth, you would notice if you go do a little research, a lot of these people hold a lot of their wealth or a good piece of their wealth. Where? In the United States. In our real estate, in our businesses, in our stock market. Yeah, they hold it here in the United States. Why? Why do they do that? 
Why do some of them hold some of their assets here in the United States? I don't know. Y'all got to answer that question. Y'all got to answer that question. After Russia became the most sanctioned nation in the world in 2022, following the start of the war in Ukraine, the BRICS bloc began seriously pursuing the creation of a common currency to be de dollarized trade and circumvent Washington weaponizing of the Western financial system. So basically, you want to go around and beat up on other countries and the United States steps in for whatever reason. Again, I don't know all the political. I'm just saying some of these countries are tired of that. They don't want the United States stepping in and hitting them with sanctions because they want to go around and beat up other countries. The U.S. steps in in some cases and the U.S. will hit them with sanctions. Why? Because we got the world currency. We got the reserve currency. Every country in America, every country in the world pretty much transact business in the U.S. dollar. So they hit these countries with these sanctions when they're out there being, a, you know, when they're kind of doing things that we don't believe they should do. Now, I ain't going to say that's right or wrong. I, I don't know at that level what America does. All I know is anybody looking to 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 devalue the dollar, in my opinion, I can't support that because. I live in the United States and our country is, is built on the dollar. My assets are tied to the dollar. So how I take care of my family, how I live my lifestyle is all tied to the dollar. So for me, I can't support that. That don't mean you don't support it. That don't mean these countries are wrong. They, they can do whatever they want to do. It's their right. If they feel like they don't want to be a part of the dollar anymore, then they don't they don't have to be. They definitely have a right to go out and create their own currency. And whoever wants to be a part of that can certainly be a part of that. That is their absolute right to be able to do that, guys. I, I don't have any problem with them doing what they're doing. I'm only telling you this information so that you can understand what's happening in the world. So that you can understand where we are with the U.S. national debt and actually who hold some of that U.S. debt. I've told you the countries that, that have a big chunk of it, almost almost $8 trillion of it is held by four or five countries. So I've told you that. You need to have an idea of what's happening with the U.S. debt and understand it's an American problem. It's not a, a, a political party for one party or another to solve. We as Americans got to solve our national debt problem. We all participate in this national debt, guys. We all do. We all participate in it. So we got to take ownership of that as Americans and, and, and right size the ship because we, we might sink if we don't. We may sink, guys. The country that we love and live in today may not look the same in 30 years if we don't change something as a people. It's not about these people right now. It's about who you elect going forward. If you're going to if you're going to elect people, you better make sure they're representatives that that are willing to work together with the American people to reduce this national debt because it's getting out of control. And it's only going to hurt us down the road if we continue to, it, to escalate, it will only come back to hurt us down the road. You can already see you got you got people in countries out here in the world who, who, who would love to see our dollar collapse. There are countries out here, guys, that would love to see our dollar collapse. They would love to see the United States f fall flat on its face. Dollar collapse, and we owe y'all $8 trillion in debt and the dollar collapse. I believe personally, and again, you don't have to believe this. I'm just telling you what I personally believe that the rise of crypto is, 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 is on purpose. I think it's on purpose. The more it goes up, I think the more it affects the U.S. dollar. That's my opinion. You don't have to hold that opinion. I'm just giving you what I believe. So I can't support crypto, not, not, not Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of that other stuff. I'm not going to support it. You can support whoever you want to. That's the great thing about the country we live in. It's a free country. They allow us to make our own decisions on what we want to support and what we don't want to support. So if you want to support it, go ahead. I'm just not going to support it. And I've given you my reasons why I'm not going to support it. 
I, I don't want to support anything that's going to deteriorate the U.S. dollar. Because I know if they can deteriorate the U.S. dollar, they're going to deteriorate our country. And this is the country that I live in, my children live in, my extended family lives in, my friends live in. This is a country that gave me so much. I'm not going to support anything that I believe is, is, is trying to strip away at that. And again, y'all know I'm not a political guy. I don't, I don't pick sides. I don't try to steer you guys one way or the other. What I try to do is provide financial information to help you build wealth. And I think sometimes you got to realize the bigger picture. You got to realize what's happening here. You got to realize how that can affect your assets. And, and, and the devaluing of the dollar for the majority of us, it will affect our assets. Because as the dollar weakens, our investments weaken. I'm just telling you, as the dollar gains more value, our investments gain more value. That's what I believe, guys. I'm no economist. I'm just a guy on YouTube who tries to give his financial opinion about what situations are going on as it relates to us building wealth. That's the only thing I do. I don't get into anything else other than wealth. How do we build wealth? How do the common folk build wealth? What are, the, what are some things can the common folk do to build wealth and increase their financial position in this country? That's it. I, I don't harbor no ill will to no country. I don't. I'm not that kind of person. I don't harbor any ill will to no, no individual that you're voting for. I harbor no ill will for no candidates. I think they're all pe people just like you and I, and they have an opportunity to do something great. If you believe they can do something great for this country, then you vote for them. That's on you. I ain't got nothing to do with that. What I try to, again, get across to you guys is simply know what's happening out here in this real world we live in. There is good and there is evil. So just know that and, and, and be able to plan accordingly and know when you see something that you're not for then it's okay if you're not for that. I'm not saying be, be disrespectful or, or, or say crazy stuff that, that, that gets you in trouble. No, I'm just saying if you see something that you don't believe is right, you have a right to question that in a, in a civil manner. You have a right to question something that you don't believe is right in a civil manner. You do. So, so protect that right. And, and, and be able to see things that you are looking at in this real world that we live in, and it's okay to be curious. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay. Don't worry about that, all right? So I appreciate y'all rocking with me. We're going to get on out of here just a tad bit earlier today. Um, I think I've been at this thing for about an hour. I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Again, man, you know, just think about your wealth. Think about where you're at today and think about where you want to be tomorrow in, in, in the activities that you're doing today. Will they get you there? That's, that's, the, that's, that's the key, guys. We got to think about our activities that we're doing today, right? We, we, we want to look at those activities and say, okay, here's my goal over here. The activities that I'm doing today, will it get me to my goal? And if it's yes, Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Keep on leveling up those, those, those activities. If you believe they can get you to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, keep leveling them up, right? If you don't believe the activities that you are doing can get you to where you want to go, then you got to change something. You got to change something. You got to drastically change something if you don't believe they can get you to where you want to be, right? You got to change something. Definition of insanity, doing the same activities over and over and over, but expecting different results. Won't work, guys. Got to change the activities if you want different results. Got to change the activities. Whatever you did in 23, if it got you to where you wanted it to be at the end of 23 and you, and, and, and you like those activities, just bring them over to 24. Keep doing them. But if you didn't get where you wanted to be in 23 doing these certain activities, then you better change some activities in 24 in order to get where you need to be. 
If you want up to 15 free stocks, Moomoo is going to give you 15 stocks or up to 15 stocks when you open a new Moomoo brokerage account. If you put $100 in your brokerage account, they're going to give you five free stocks. If you put $1,000 in your brokerage account, and many of you have, they're going to give you up to 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo link. Open up your new Moomoo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Y'all know I'm rocking with Moomoo for 2024 and beyond in order to be able to use that brokerage platform to make my investments into my three big boy blue chip paper assets that I believe are going to give me the opportunity to double my net worth in the next 10 years. So if you want to rock with me, if you want to copy my plan, consider that Moomoo account. Go open it up. Go click on that link down in the description box and open it up and, and get yourself in a position where you take yourself off the sideline, you put yourself in the game, and now you start buying assets to build wealth and just have a long-term outlook. I got a 10-year outlook. I'm 56 years old, guys, and I'm 56, and I still got a 10-year outlook, right? So don't get caught up in, oh, I'm 40 years old. I don't have enough time. Yeah, you do. That's just excuse. Throw the excuses out the window. Throw the excuses out the window and just take action, right? Just take action. Now, if you open the Moo Moo account and, and, and you put money in it and you're not sure how to use it, not a big deal. You got two choices. Inside of the Moo Moo app, they got plenty of tutorials in there that can kind of help you learn how to use the app. They got tutorials in there, right? They got a great learning center in there and it can help you. Second option is you can just send me an email and say, hey, Richard, I opened my Moomoo account. I put money in it. I'm ready to start buying my favorite companies, my favorite ETFs, but I don't quite know how to use it. And I, I can't really maneuver. I, I'm not really good at trying to figure it out in the app. Can you help me? I will help you. I did a video that walks you through the basic steps to use the Moomoo app. I did a video. Right. I dropped it yesterday on my channel. But you send me an email and tell me you open the Moomoo account and you want me to send you that tutorial video. My email address is down in the description box. I will send you that tutorial video free of charge. Send it right to you. All you got to do is email me and say, Richard, I opened my Moomoo account. I funded it. I'm ready to go, but I'm not quite sure how to use the app. And I'll send you that video and it'll walk you through the basic steps. It's about a 17 minute video, but it covers a lot of information and it'll be really good for someone who's brand new at this and ain't really never used the brokerage app before. So if you want that video, send me an email. Now, if you also say to yourself, hey, that's great, Richard, but I don't really know what I want to buy. I don't know much about stocks. I don't know much about ETFs. Then I also have a video that I did that walks you through my wealth transfer blueprint, the three big boy blue chip paper assets that I'm buying over the next 10 years to double my net worth. I can send you that video as well. Now, that video is not being sent to you because I'm trying to give you financial advice. That video is being sent to you because it's telling you what I'm buying. And if you want to copy that, that's your choice. You certainly can. And it gives you information why I'm buying them. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CFP. I'm not a CPA. I'm none of that stuff. I'm just a guy who have been able to invest in the big three over the last 25 years to build a level of wealth that I'm comfortable with. And I decided, you know something? I'm going to do it again. I did it once. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take another 10 years and double that net worth just because why? I'm doing this YouTube thing and I want to show y'all it's possible. Even at 56 years old, it's possible. But you got to have patience. You got to be consistent and you got to have discipline if you want to pull that off. But those are the things that I recommend you consider opening your Moomoo account, which is linked below. And then if you want to learn how to use it, send me an email. I'll send you the tutorial video. If you want to copy my plan, what I'm doing, that's totally up to you. I'll send you that video as well. But you got to email me. All right, guys. Well, guys, if you appreciate it, lock it in with a thumbs up. We're getting ready to get on out of here, and uh, I got to get the rest of my Thursday 
in gear. Um, I got some things I got to do. So it's been a pleasure. I, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed my hour or so with you guys. I, I hope the information that I provided uh, is, is information that you look at as just information. I'm not trying to stir you one way or the other. I'm just giving you information, guys. I, I just want you to take these nuggets and, 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 and decide what you want to do with your financial life. And hopefully some of them will help you make some decisions. I'm just telling you the decisions that I'm making. I'm a proud American. Uh, even with our, our, our ups and downs in this country, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in the world. And that's the truth. Even with our ups and downs in this country, even, even we're not a perfect country. We, we're far from it. But, but I wouldn't want to live any other place in the world other than right where I'm living at. Because I know as a 26-year-old man, as a 26-year-old man in this country, I was able to build wealth and nobody tried to stop me. Nobody said, Richard, you can't buy that real estate in that, in that area. Nobody said, oh, you can't buy those paper assets. Nobody said you can't start your business. Nobody said that to me. I was able to do all of that stuff. And for me, priceless, because I was, I was able to take care of my family. Now, I know other places in the world you can do that too, but I'm an American. So I'm biased towards America. I just am. So lock it in with a thumbs up. I'm getting ready to get out of here. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Hit that thumbs up before you get out of here, guys. Hit that thumbs up. It's very important that we, 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 we smash that thumbs up. Well, guys, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for stopping by the channel. If you're stopping by for the first time, and uh, you want to subscribe, hey, subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, I understand, guys. I ain't for everybody. I keep telling you, I ain't for everybody. I get it. You know, some people get triggered when I talk about crypto. They get triggered if I, if I say something about the Democrats, if I say something about the Republicans. They get, people get triggered for all kinds of reasons. And I'm not one of these guys that's trying to trigger nobody. I'm just giving you my opinion. And again, we have a right in this country to, to exercise our own opinion. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here to try to help people. So if you don't agree with the opinion, that's okay. I'm not mad with you. I'm not going to argue with you. You just don't agree with it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Have a blessed day. Go outside and get you some, get you some sunshine. Breathe a little bit. Breathe in some fresh air. Drink some water. Get you some exercise in. Keep your health up. Let some of that stress go, man. Let it go. Let that stress go. Worry about you. Let the stress go, man. It's okay. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Peace.